Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Sally who will open up about how she was romance scammed by a man named Marcelo. Sally and Marcelo hit it off right away and started a relationship online that would last over three years. The two never met in person. All communication was either over the phone or through text message. Sally is now having doubts that Marcelo might not be who he claims to be after sending him over $100,000. Let's jump right into it. Real quick, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Well, hello, social catfish. My name is Sally. I own a restaurant and I love to cook. Uh, my family is the most important thing to me. I'm a very happy person. Uh, I love life. And I just thought it would be nice to have someone to share it with. Well, uh, my friend was Marcello Lombardo. And I loved that name because I'm Italian and it felt old world to me. And he told me he was half Italian, so that I liked. You know, we both, you know, hit the button that we liked each other. So then we started talking and... He said, I'm surprised that you're on Tinder because you'd think that men would be knocking your door down to, to talk to you because you're so pretty. And then I said, no, no man knocking my door down, you know, and he was very good looking. You know, you keep seeing that good looking man in your head, you know, things that he said to me and this and that. I was flattered, you know. Marcelo was one of the most handsomest men I've ever seen, and his teeth were just beautiful. And he was older, though, you know, and, and he was so sweet. He was always laughing and he was always saying funny things. And, of course, he always said things to me like, you're just so beautiful. And we talked about how money isn't everything and love is everything. He crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. Very handsome, tall, you know, but I didn't think I was that bad looking either. My pictures looked pretty nice. And I, fig I felt like the stuff he said could be true. I've always been told that I'm beautiful and uh, by, by everybody, you know, or better looking than most. So everything he had to say to me, I believed, you know, and I probably wanted to believe it, too, because I thought this man was going to come here and we were going to spend our life together. The first time I sent money, it was by my house and I sent him a thousand. And when I sent him the thousand, just before I sent it, I said, well, I know you're probably not going to ever speak to me again because you just want money. I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed talking to you and I think so much of you, blah, 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 blah. And then so he said, no, 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 I'm going to talk to you, this and that. So anyway, I sent him the thousand and then I was very surprised that he still talked to me. But I didn't realize that he had much more in mind, you know, much more money in mind. All of Marcelo's problems never ended. He had a reason of why he needed money every other month. This is a perfect example of the scam never ends. There's always an angle or a reason why scammers need you to send them money. Unfortunately, Sally didn't realize it yet. He used to wash his feet before he went in bed. You know, he would do things that you would think a scammer wouldn't do. You know, he says, well, I got to wash. I said, what are you doing? Are you washing your feet again? He goes, yep, because you could hear the water sloshing, you know. He said, I have to wash my feet before I go to bed because I don't like to put dirty feet in a bed, you know. And then he talked to me when he was brushing his teeth many, many times, you know, like, you know, why would a scammer brush his teeth? You see, I was thinking all this stuff. He told me that he had all these cars and he had to go to Africa because he had to sign these papers. He can't do it by fax. And so he went to South Africa and then all of a sudden he tells me they found cocaine in one of the cars. Then he said they arrested me and they put me in this place that's just before going into their prison. He needed some money because he needed to hire an attorney. I went to the bank and I sent like $3,800 right off the bat to him. And it was just one thing after another. My daughter said, boy, she's never seen anyone with so many problems. Finally got out of that jail type thing and he was on the way home. He said he was going to be leaving their Christmas day. And so then I would see him or Christmas Eve. So I'd see him Christmas day. And then he told me my visa expired. He told me he got involved with these people that could, you know, illegally get his visa uh, straight, but he needed money for that. And then he needed money to be there. And, you know, I kept fighting with him about giving him money. You know, he wanted a thousand dollars because he had to stay somewhere 
you know, while he was waiting for these people to get this stuff in line for his getting his visa going, you know, he needed money to do this and that for his cars. And then all of a sudden he needed more money for the hotel bill, 3000 more and some food money. And, and, you know, and then he tried to make it look like I was being cheap, not giving him a lot of food money. I said, how much food can you eat? You know? And I said, this is getting ridiculous. He goes, it's, it's only two cars. It's two cars. We, all we have to do is sell two cars and, and you'll get your money back. He always had a good excuse. So I drove all the way to Nebraska State Line, which was three hour drive and nothing. So I went home with a disappointment, you know. Finally, he was coming home and the police stopped him. They uh, arrested him and he told me that they were going to just let him go home to Slovakia, that he had to go home and they were going to put his cars in this big warehouse until he could, you know, work his everything out to come back. So then he went home to Slovakia and then we're talking in, uh, with Slovakia and he said, oh, it's so boring here in Slovakia. And could you send me some money for some food, you know, because I, I think I supported him for three years. You know, I gave him every money I could possibly find. And he said, the attorney just needs $700. So I gave him the $700 for the guy to take care of it. And then he says, oh, he needs a $3,000 retainer. I said, I thought you only... He only needed seven hundred dollars. Now he needs three thousand more. And he says, "Well, this this is expensive, you know." And he said, "He's done this all the time. He needs the three thousand to get all these papers and to pay people that are dishonest, you know, uh, for this." So I sent the three thousand, and then he needed three thousand more because now he needed the guy's profit because the guy paid all the other people. He says now he he's going to need profit. So I sent that three thousand. It was always another three thousand, you know. I told him, let me just bring you the money, and then I can get you. He would never let me bring him the money. At this point, Sally had sent Marcelo over $100,000. Sally became very ill with a virus and was even put on a ventilator. She was told that she had a 15% chance of living, but Marcelo still had more tricks up his sleeve. Well, then I was in the hospital, and the first month I was there, he opened a credit card in my name. <clears throat> I don't know how he was able to do that. He also opened a bank account in my name with, with a bank I never heard of, and it was called Truist Bank. Luckily, I found out about it because they sent me a letter and it said, thank you for uh, telling us that you don't want overdraft protection. I thought, what is overdraft protection? I never, I don't even know who you are, lady. I called the bank, I told them the whole sordid story, and they canceled that bank account. Well, little did I know there was another bank account that he, he, he did a checking and a savings, Somehow he was able to cash two $2,500 checks with this bank. And he signed something on the back that looked nothing like my signature. They were after me. And they said they were going to ruin my credit. And oh man, every, it was just terrible. When I met him, I had $20,000 in the bank and no debt. When I ended with him, I had no money in the bank and uh, at least $90,000 worth of debt. I even had more than that. You know, it's just that I took care of some of it at first. I, I refinanced my building to get rid of 30000 of it, and I thought I was done with them. I'm real well known in this area. You know, I've built this business for 24 years, and anywhere you go, in, in any of the towns, five, six, seven towns around our area, if you mention the name of my business, they've been there or they know how great the food is. I have had income property for 20 years. I, ha I own a restaurant for 23 years. I'm not a dumb woman I, and I'm not lonely. I, I'm around people all the time. It wasn't loneliness. It was just that I thought it'd be nice not to be by myself the rest of my life. You know, I thought it'd be nice to go to a theater with someone or I'm sure everybody else feels the same way that does what I did. But you know what? If they keep asking you for money, don't give it to him because I think an honorable man does not take money from a woman. But, you know, he talked a good game. And he was so good looking, I know. It's my vanity. I'm reaching out to Social Catfish because I feel like I was really taken. I feel like a fool. And, you know, I am a fool for love. I, I was just looking for love and, and I was looking in the wrong places. But for one thing, I, I love to help people. If I can stop one person from going through this, it'd be worth it for me. And I would love for Social Catfish 
to investigate and try to find out something about this man and, and you know, that I can have a little closure on this because, like I said, I feel like a real fool that I did that. But you know what? I I love love, you know, and I would love to be in love. And I'm always going to feel this way. After our team received this video, we knew we had to find the man in the photos. We did a bunch of digging on the internet. We ran a reverse image search on our site, socialcatfish.com, and were able to find the true man in the photos. Sally went through a very traumatic experience. To go through something as awful as this and then to tell the story was both courageous and heartbreaking. We would like to ask anybody that is watching this video to please leave a positive comment below to help lift her spirits. If you're looking to find the identity of your online lover, you can start with the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com. You can click this YouTube card or click the link in our bio. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. It was time to sit down with Sally and her daughter, Jennifer, who helped her realize that Marcelo was a scammer. Okay guys, so we wanted to ask you a couple of questions to get an idea of where you guys are right now and to get a, an idea of your thoughts and feelings about the story. Our first question is, Jennifer, we understand that it's really difficult for people in the situation when they understand that their family member might be being catfished. So what was it like confronting your mom about Marcelo? Well, yeah, it was really difficult to get to the point to um, talk to her about that. So um, she was on the ventilator and I sent my brother to the hospital to go get her phone. And then I found out about it. Now, you know, I, I, I knew, you know, but I, I got you confirmation found, found the bills. Yeah. on the phone. Yeah, yeah, I got confirmation of the messaging on the phone. Um, I was in charge of her bills. And then I, you know, saw all of the bills that had been racked up on her credit cards. Mom wanted her phone back when she got off the ventilator and I uh, didn't want to give it to her. We have a lot of love between us. Yeah, she's she's a, you know, she's my mom. So I, I, I don't want to like take over her life and um, not let her have control over mm -hmm. things. And, you know, she owns a business and uh, I wanted her to have dignity. And um, so we, I, I did talk to her very um, gently about it, and um, and it and it turned out good. It turned but out I good expected for us. it. I expected it. I knew she found my bills, so I knew she would have known. But they did it so good. They 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 did it with such love and respect that, you know, I'm so happy. I'm very proud of my children. You know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sally, yeah. was this the first person you've ever sent money to online? Marcella. Yeah. Well, I tried to send this other guy money, but the bank wouldn't let me do it. They had a talk with me, and they kind of made me realize that the guy was a scammer. And so I didn't send him. I wanted to send him five thousand dollars. That one guy with the oil, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's the uh, Marcelo is the guy I sent all the money to. I sent him over a hundred thousand dollars. What was it that made you feel so comfortable with Marcelo in giving him money? Wow, I, 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 that's, a, that's a tough question for me. I just felt really comfortable with him. He just, he, mm -hmm. he knew what to say to me. And I tried to, you know, like catch him in lies or, you know, I ch checked him in every way. I tried to, you know, make sure that he wasn't a scammer, but he always knew what to say to me. You know, I don't, I, that's all I can say. I just felt really comfortable with him. Getting into some of the things we found, we did some digging with our tools to find information all over the internet. And what we found is the real man in the pictures is named Stefano. And he's a gay man and he has uh, pictures of him and his significant other on his Instagram account. So it turns out that Almost all of the pictures Marcelo sent to you is from Stefano's Instagram account. We found tons of fake accounts of Stefano from all across the internet. So this is something that he seems to be dealing with on a regular basis. This is something that, that is very common on the internet. Unfortunately, a lot of models and celebrities have their images stolen all the time and people use them to start relationships with unsuspecting victims. It says here, beware of fake profiles. This is the only original. See that? Mm -hmm. Yep. I didn't see any of the kissy face ones yet. <laughs> I know. I I can't believe it. It's just ridiculous, you know. I I yeah. I'm I'm really hurt because I believe this person, you know, 
and seeing all these pictures and knowing that he's some person in Italy, it's just terrible, you know, but I, I, I figured it, you know, since, I mean, I got out of the hospital a few months ago, you know, I expected as much, you know, it's just that seeing it really gets to you, really knocks you out, you know, it's, it's tough, it's heartbreaking, you know, but that's life. What could I do? Now I just got to go on and make the best of my life. There's that one I like the best right there. <laughs> I just can't even, I mean, I believe it, but I, it's, it's just so shocking, you know, because there, there's another one that he sent. There's that one where he said he's in the airplane yeah. coming to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing these photos, is it causing you to look at the three-year relationship in a different light? Is it causing you to look back on some of the things he said and some of the stories he was telling you and, uh, you know, change your opinion about it? Well, I do. My opinion's completely changed. But the thing is, you know, like you said, look back on the three years. Sometimes I, I thought he was a scammer. And then I would tell him, I'd catch him in something. And then he'd always explain it out to me. It's just that his tactic was to keep um, asking for a little bit and a little bit yeah. more and a little bit more. I never sent him a and lot. And then say, I'm going to come now. Yeah. And then something comes up and, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to come now. And, and you know, we said, Mom, like, I we didn't really know the extent of the money. We yeah. suspected there was money involved. But um, I never admitted it. The whole, I'm coming home, honey. I'm yeah. coming home. Um, and, you know, every couple of weeks or something mom would say oh Marcelo's coming now and yeah. we would all kind of laugh yeah we used to say even we'd kid around and I'd say yeah I'm talking to some fat guy with a beard right mm -hmm. I mean even when it was going on but I I still believed him it was it's ridiculous I believed him I wanted to maybe I wanted to you know but I can't stand this anymore I need to have a life you know and I realized that I I hurt my kids by doing it too you know and I just want to respect them. I even quit. I was vaping, you know, because I quit smoking and I was vaping. And I even promised them I'd quit vaping. And usually I, you know, I, I kind of sneak, but I haven't even snuck that. I have so much respect for my children, the way they handled this all and how they treated me with love. And, you know, they told them that I had a 15 percent chance of living. And I think I, I lived because of the love they gave me and the understanding. Right. You know, so, you know. So, Sally, how has this entire situation with Marcelo affected you financially? You mentioned that you were sending the profits from the restaurant to him for over three years. How is that, how is that playing out right now? Like today, I, was, I went to the, I, I keep getting all these bills. See, when I met Marcelo, I had $18,000 in the bank and zero debt. And my house is all paid for. That's luckily. She said, my, the kids were saying, we were, we were glad you didn't give them your house, you know. So anyway, and, and, and now I, I have a $116,000 mortgage on my restaurant. And uh, I had, I had $65,000 worth of credit card debt, which was driving me nuts. But, you know, uh, the bank lady didn't give me quite as much as she should have, you know. And so I'm still paying a lot of these. And today I got... You know, every time I look, there's another six bills, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to get ahead of it. Um, my, my business is seasonal, so we haven't gotten crazy busy yet. But once we get crazy busy, I'll, hit, I'll get it all paid off again. So when I'm all done, I will be okay. I'll have money in the bank. It's just now, it's just nerve-wracking. I just mailed six bills, and I'm not used to all these bills, you know. What are your thoughts on online dating now, and would you ever use online dating in the future? You know, I'm afraid of online dating, but the only thing I can say is if I ever did, you know, I'm not thinking about it now, I'd have to meet the person right away. You got to meet them right away because then you know that they're they're for real, right? You know, they're not the fat guy with the beard. Yeah. Which I don't know. I might like a fat guy with a beard if he was nice to me. You know, I'm just saying, you know, that's just what we, we the joke we said, but I'm not saying that it's totally out, but I told my kids that if I ever did it, I'd tell them and they'd be a part of it and I'd have to meet the person right away. Sounds like you have really great plans for the future, Sally. Um, like, you're say like you just said, that you just bought a house next to your daughter and you know, life's, life's heading down a, a new path for you. I'm gonna go yeah. back to being a happy girl, believe me, you know, <laughs> because it's, it's who I am.
you know, I mean, I, I feel bad. I'm brokenhearted that this man did this to me. For but, sure. there's you know, there's nothing. I'm a realist. There's nothing I can do to change it. And I just got to go on and make the best of my life. I, you know, I kind of plan on living until I'm 95 or so. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I got a long life to live, so I got to make it the best I can, you know. Yeah, Sally, I just want to let you know that we appreciate you and your story and for you taking the time to be here you as well jennifer we appreciate you guys you know so i just want you to know it's or any people that are watching this that this is so this is so everywhere you know and most of these people online are scammers look i've talked to at least 10 maybe 13 scammers you know and, and one person was real one person was real but he was the ugliest guy i ever saw you know I, what could i do you know, I showed my daughter. She goes, Mom, why don't you get someone, that, the, the other daughter? Mom, why don't you? I said, here, look. See this face? Uh, you you want me to date him? No. <laughs> want me to date him? No. You want me to date You know, I'd rather be alone. <laughs> I got a lot. I'm not really alone. I have a lot of people in my life and happiness, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.